Hi, I'm Bobby Rio. Now, when a lot of guys decide that they want to get better at meeting women and picking up women and getting more dates, they make a ton of rookie mistakes and they hold on to a lot of misconceptions about what being an attractive man really means. Usually these kinks are painfully worked out over time, but as a shortcut, here's four quick fixes to the most common attraction mistakes. Okay, so the first mistake is being cocky. And the fix to that is being confident. Sure, being cocky can yield limited success with women in certain social situations, right? If you're at a nightclub and you're a complete dick long enough, you might do okay. But the problem with being a complete dick all the time is that nobody can stand being around a complete dick all the time, right? So it's incredibly difficult to be cocky all the time. And the second that you have a moment of vulnerability, women will see right through you, right? And that facade, that, that cocky facade that you're trying to project will be shattered. Instead, you wanna be confident. What's the difference between being confident and being cocky? When you're cocky, you have to constantly remind people that you're cool. When you're confident, everybody kind of knows that you're cool. Confidence is an unbreakable, right? It's integrated, it's part of your character. Unlike cockiness, it isn't a false wall that you're putting up between you and the world, right? Um, it's just who you are. It's easy to say though, and I know that it's difficult to master, but it's the foundation for greatness. Next, so the mistake is bragging and the fix is being interesting. Bragging is bad, but what is it, right? We all kind of know that bragging is bad, but a brag is completely unsolicited boast, obviously used to inflate yourself, right? It's really difficult to not brag because we know that we're kind of under pressure to get a girl interested in us as quickly as possible. And we have all these things in our mind um, that we think will get them, right? And being interesting to women is what will get them obsessed with you, right? Our interesting, positive qualities are what makes us unique. Unique is rare and rare is valuable and women crave valuable. So how do you get yourself to appear interesting, right? And how do you get those interesting qualities to come across without seeming like a bragging douche? The key is to not come right out with it, right? Women need to feel like they're uncovering this really interesting tidbit about you. Like they're peeling back an onion, um, which you were too modest to give up too easily, right? I'll give you an example. Uh, a few weeks ago, a friend of mine got his first IMBD credit, right? It's a, um, a site for actors and producers and directors. And all my friends were telling him, dude, that will get you instantly laid. It won't, but that's what they were telling him, right? So at the next party he goes to, he almost instantly busts out his phone. And the first girl he approaches, he's like, hey, check this out. I got an IMD credit this week. Amazing, blah, blah, blah. Not only did he get the dreaded look of apathy, he ran out of steam after that opener and really had nowhere to go. It, it, the, I watched it happen and it fizzled out and it was painful. So he decided to switch things up and he went into his normal cold openers. And when things came up naturally in the conversation, he found himself going, you know, I'm in a really good mood today. You know, I had a, a, a really good week. And of course the girl's gonna ask you, oh, why? You know, why did you have such a week? What, what happened? And he was like, oh, I got some good news. And she's like, what, 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 what happened? What was it? And he's like, ah, oh, it's kind of stupid. It's, it, it's, it's not a big deal. And she's like, come on, tell me. And he's like, I don't know. I, I, I don't want to brag. It, 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 that sounds so douchey. And no, he actually cited how lame bragging is as a way to come off a little bit more modest, okay? And sometimes you can do that. You don't want to overdo it, but you can do that. Eventually, he revealed his IMD credit, but not before building up a little anticipation and making it seem like she was, you know, twisting his arm to get it out of him. Now you might be saying, great, but I don't have an IMDBD credit, I'm not an actor, blah, blah, blah. Well, you should have at least one interesting hobby or passion. Every guy should, right? Whether you write, you paint, you travel, you play music, whatever it is, have some interesting things to reveal about yourself. Um, by the way, if you're not sure how to sound interesting or how to sound charismatic in a conversation, then I highly suggest grabbing a copy of my Charismatic Conversation Secrets book. It's got 10 years of my favorite techniques, my favorite word-for-word -word lines, and essentially everything you need to keep things fun, 
and flirtatious and playful, you can grab a copy at the link below for under $10. Okay, mistake. Looking like you're trying too hard. The fix is looking naturally good. Why is it bad if girls think you're trying really hard to sleep with them? Think about it. The female rationale looks something like this. If he's trying really hard, that must be because other girls don't want to sleep with him, right? Or he wouldn't have to try this hard. There must be something wrong with him. That's why trying hard is bad. What's the fastest way that you'll be pegged as trying too hard before you even meet a girl, before you even open up your mouth? It's your wardrobe, right? Now, not that you should say to yourself, um, uh, you know, walk into a bar in like a sleeveless shirt and you don't want to be wearing flip flops and look like you just rolled out of bed. Um, but you don't, you know, you, you don't want to look like shit. I, I, I agree, right? Um, so how do you walk the line though between looking trashy and looking like you're trying too hard, which a lot of guys do when they go out? It's simple. Kill your going out clothes. You know what I'm talking about. We all had them, right? It's that shirt and those shoes that you only wear when you go out to the bars or the clubs. That's your, you know, get laid outfit. Girls know it, right? And it needs to die. Yes, you always want to dress for your surroundings, but as a general rule of thumb, if you can't wear it with a suit jacket or as casually as you would a t-shirt, it's not your friend. Look good, dress up, you know, peacock a bit, but make your appearance look natural at the bar or when you're out on a date with a girl. And for the love of God, dress your age if you're an older guy. Um, never. Uh, the next mistake is never establishing attraction and the fix is sexualizing the conversation. So what you're about to hear is arguably the best piece of advice for instantly revolutionizing your attraction ability. Ready? Let girls know that you're sexually interested in them. This doesn't mean, you know, you start opening with, Hey, I want to have sex with you or Hey, you have really great breasts. Like you don't have to overdo it. You don't have to do it right away. But think of it like a fruit, right? You want to pick it when it's ripe and before it starts to rot and attraction will rot, right? So at some point while you're talking to a girl, cut the bullshit and say something along the lines of, okay, that thing that you did was unbelievably sexy or something like, I can't believe how much we have um, in common. That means that we would probably have amazing sex, but then we'd fight all the time afterwards and um, it's our gut instinct to not do this because we think we'll freak a girl out if our true intentions are revealed, but it's really the contrary, right? You have to let her know that you're actually interested in her in a sexual way, because if she doesn't think you are, she'll quickly find somebody who is. I mean, this is probably the number one obstacle my clients run into. Um, like most guys who were absolute geeks in high school, I've got a million stories about myself building up lots of rapport with a girl only to have a buddy of mine eventually, you know, boast that he banged her. Once I got over the fear of losing my rapport, my world changed. I, I, I let my conversations um, move forward instead of letting that attraction rot. I actually remember the first time I ever did this. I was at a patio bar in the summer and I saw this girl who was completely my type. And it turned out that she was similar to me. She was into traveling and she liked reading books and psychology. And after about five minutes of talking, I felt like we could go on forever, but I knew that I couldn't do that. I knew that I was running out of time, that attraction was going to rot if I didn't change gears. So in the middle of one of her sentences, I interrupted her with, sorry, I didn't hear a word you just said. You just pushed your glasses up and it's like this whole sexy librarian thing that you do. And it's, I gotta, it's driving me crazy. And after a blush and another very sexy, blatant, you know, glasses adjustment, I was getting her number. When her friend came up, grabbed her by the arm and said, remember how you have a boyfriend. <laughs> Worst words ever. Sure, I didn't take her home and, you know, it didn't work out because she had a boyfriend. But in a way, it was still a victory for me because I learned a lesson, right? And I've been living by this rule and ever since I've been getting a lot better results my clients do. So again, if you're not sure how to sound interesting or charismatic in a conversation, then I suggest grabbing a copy of my Charismatic Conversation Secrets book. It, for under $10, it's got 10 years and close to 200 pages of my favorite techniques, word for word lines, and essentially everything you need to keep things fun and flirtatious. You can grab a copy at the link below. And as always, if you like the video, hit like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know what you'd like me to cover in my next video.